right, so here's the news of the hour. House Judiciary Committee Chair Jerry Nadler did what we expected, issued that subpoena. Remember, they passed it in committee about a week and a half ago. He's been holding it pending the release of the Mueller report in the underlying evidence. So now it is official. That pursuit begins. Tom Dupree, former Deputy Assistant AG under President George W. Bush. How you doing, Tom? And good morning to you. And great good job morning, yesterday. Bill. I mean, we're parsing the language in real time, and you are awesome. Now, oh, thank you. what does the pursuit on behalf of the subpoena, if you get the entire unredacted report, what does that do for Jerry Nadler? Well, I think his purpose here is pretty self-evident. He wants to be able to pound away on this argument that there still is some sort of cover-up being perpetrated by the Attorney General and the White House and that sort of thing. The fact is there were a good number of redactions. I think it was probably a lot fewer redactions than many people anticipated, but there still are a bunch of redactions in the report. Now, if the Congressman's view is that buried within or under one of those redactions is the smoking gun that is finally going to implicate the President, I think he's mistaken about that. I think that the redacted material, as the Attorney General explained, falls into one of four well-recognized categories. Now, the Congressman can push back and say, well, this redaction went too far, or this one was unnecessary. Maybe he's right about that, and ultimately a court might decide that this shouldn't have been redacted. It's also possible that over time, as some of the ongoing proceedings come to light and put in the public sphere, that some of those redactions will be able to be removed. But I think the purpose here is a strategic one. It's to be able to hit away on the argument that there's an ongoing cover-up. So what Bill Barr said is that he's going to share the unredacted version with certain members of Congress. W w would Jerry Nadler be one of those? Uh, probably not. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, if they're talking about limiting it to the very top levels of Congress who have authorization to see classified information, I don't think he would be included in that So then the idea group. is to use it maybe not in a legal sense, but a little political sense based on your first answer. And then ultimately, you want to, Democrats would want to have a vote in, in committee and then perhaps on the full floor of the House to release all of it to the public, right? That, that would then be the next logical step. I think that's the step, and I, I don't think they're going to be satisfied until the entire report is, is unredacted. And, and look, there, there's no question that there is a strong public value in transparency and putting out for the American people to see everything that can be seen, but within the confines of law. Transparency is a very, very good public good, but it's not an absolute. And I think the Attorney General has apparently responsibly gone through the report, decided what can be kept uh, public, what needs to be put behind redactions, and we'll see. I think it will change over time. As more information comes out. Okay, two more things I want to get to. Eric Swalwell, the Democrat from California, he's running for president. Here's the tweet he sent yesterday calling for Bill Barr to resign. Here we go. Russia attacked us. The mother report details a multiplicity of contacts between Russia and real Donald Trump's team, and that Trump and his team materially impaired the investigation. I don't know how that's true. Uh, yet our attorney general acts as Trump's defense attorney. He can't represent both. Barr must resign. I guess what Mueller said is that no one, no one took the bait from Russia, but what what was clear watching the coverage yesterday is that so many Democrats have turned their fire on Bill Barr. Is that fair to say now, Tom? I think that is fair to say. Look, I, I think that there were a lot of Democrats who were hoping that the report would have reached a different conclusion as to the underlying collusion or non-existence of collusion with Russia. And when they didn't get that, I think they said, well, what can we do now? And I think Barr presents a target. Um, I mean, his press conference yesterday, he explained the reasons why he reached a conclusion he'd done on obstruction. I think it opened him up to charges from some quarters that he was acting more as the president's personal lawyer rather than as an impartial, neutral arbiter of the law. So so I think okay. they see Barr as a more vulnerable target at this point, frankly, than the president. I just want to share this. James Comey, 12 hours ago, tweeted this. He was back in the forest. And I, I don't, are those green shoots? Are the shades of 2010, the economy turning around? He said so many answers. But this was the tweet that preceded that about three weeks prior, March 24. So many questions. I, Tom, you want to analyze that or you just want to say pass? Bill, I am totally at a loss. It's sort of like a weird James Comey haiku. I cannot okay. make head or tail of it. <laughs> oh, brought to you by Twitter. Thank you, Tom Dupree. We'll talk very soon. Thank you, sir.